let's spend a few minutes here talking about ATO controls and how ATO controls specifically are attached to hardware and things that are going on in your environment. So here we're going to draw out uh, the ATO with some of the controls represented there by locks, yes those are locks. These controls represent things within your environment like access control to the environment or what the video camera is auditing, those type of things. And many of these are built from the NIST control set. Many of you may be familiar with 800-53. So those are those controls. And there's many of them. I only drew three, but there are many inside of an ATO. So what about the hardware and what does it mean to continuously monitor related to the ATO. So here we're drawing out a server. Let's draw out a firewall here. So these components within your environment are going to generate audit logs of some sort. And you're going to monitor those. Maybe you're going to use Nagios or VMC or CA or, or whatever, Windows audit logs, whatever it is that you're going to audit. And we're going to have sensors that are going to monitor the controls. So let's build this out a little bit more. We're going to draw a few more controls here so we can get our point down. Remember, when I'm talking about controls here, I'm talking about the actual controls that run the environment. This is the who, what, when, how, how, why type of controls, right? What happens when somebody breaks into my environment? What are my audit logs doing now? How am I doing this process? All of these are part of the ATO itself. Within the ATO, you're going to sign up, basically, to have certain controls in place and be monitored all of the time. So let's look at some of those variables or sensors that need to go in the environment. This happens to be a network card. So an interface card, and then let's just say a port that is open on this firewall. These are two sensors. We're going to monitor this with different software. And we're going to look and make sure that those that port on the firewall and that NIC stays within compliance. Notice there's a red and blue control. Well, we're going to relate back that control, right? We're going to watch it, of course, in continuous monitoring. But we're going to relate that control, that red lock there on the network card, specifically relates to a NIST control. So let's go ahead and highlight that so you can see what I'm talking about here. So if we highlight those controls, there's a control inside of your ATO that's watching the NIC. Now, these are examples. You know, it has to be, you know, Let's just put up an example here for, on the screen that you can see. So are we secure with this NIC? Does it comply to AC4? Which, by the way, doesn't have anything to do with that. But just as an example, are we secure? Does it comply with AC4? Same thing is here on the, on the, uh, the, the firewall. Um, does it comply? Is it secure and comply to AB12 as a control set? And are we feeding that log from that firewall into our ATO so that when that firewall is no longer secure or the standard defined within the control AB12 is no longer met, are we doing something about it? That is continuous monitoring. It's not just simply good enough to know that there's a problem. We have to actually continually monitor the environments to make sure that our environments are always within compliance. So that is how we manage an ATO with the hardware component and software and process components and how we do and control all of the controls, violations, continuous monitoring, tie it all back to the ATO.